Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hi, I'm Port Ponky. And I'm Will Block. Today, we're discussing Farscape, Season 2, Episode 14. Beware of Dog. The crew hunt for a mysterious parasite whilst Crichton experiences unwanted visions. I have a feeling this episode is better on rewatch, so I'm curious what you think of it. I like this one a whole bunch, but I get the feeling you maybe didn't like it very much. No, not until the end of it well towards the the last bit of it when we find out what's happening it resembles a bad episode up until that point and then you realize oh they were doing something clever the whole time but then that doesn't change how i felt through most of the episode so i'm conflicted i think it's okay uh so the the question, I guess, is, is it more fun when you know that the fork is not the parasite? Or uh, that you know Rigel is not Rigel? The, well, uh, the only really bit that changes is when Rigel is uh, mucking with Dargo. So, so when Dargo's unconscious and Rigel is like trying to put something in his mouth or 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 whatnot because it's it's parasite rigel so it's not quite apparent what they're really doing right i really liked the limited communication stuff when he would speak in broken words well not broken words uh he was really limited in his ability to express himself to the crew Hey, it makes the little Vork guy quite a sympathetic character, which is good because it had been really stupid for a lot <laughs> of the episode. I like the episode generally because it's kind of a good mystery with a a reasonable twist. So- I think I just don't like the Vork. Oh, he has a face that's too close to human. It, it's one of those aliens that's very obviously a puppet. Well, not even a puppet, like a weird animatronic thing. Yeah, you never see its legs unless it's not moving. It just looks weird how they frame it for most of the episode. Uh, yeah, it's always sort of just the neck and the head. It's kind of it, not very natural. He's played for laughs for almost the whole episode. But then it bothers me because he's treated as sort of a an insect, I guess. But then he has a human face, so it's weird. It's not, okay, so it's not like the voice is a cool guy to me because I knew the twist. It's still kind of just a weird, annoying thing. It's a bit clunky in every scene. I love when Aaron pushes it by its face. They always treat the the uh, puppet creatures quite harshly on the show. They love getting the actors to interact directly with them. It plays on screen really well. Aaron's also carrying the vork around on her back as well. It works a lot better than, say, when you try to punch a CGI creature. Um... Yes, for all that the Vork didn't come off as particularly natural. CGI is rarely natural. Especially not in the era that this show was produced in. Like, the CGI shots of the Vork really stand out so horribly. (laughs) You know what? I changed my mind. This episode's pretty good. Is it okay? This... Okay, so other than the Vork hunt, there's there's a slight subplot to this episode about John that doesn't get resolved. 
Which is fine. What What's your take on this? Well, I kept waiting for it to have a payoff, and I thought it would be related to the other stuff happening. But then it turns out it was completely unrelated, and it wasn't resolved, so it it felt strange. Was it surprising to you? No, no, the Scorpius stuff? Yeah. I guess it was surprising to me that it's... Uh, well, the way I took it was that Scorpius is talking to him, and it's not just a fevered dream or something. What is it? Uh, Scorpius has John on speed dial. I see. I mean, I'm remaining as neutral as I can. <laughs> I was going to say that maybe Scorpius implanted something in John's head, but I feel like they should have detected that. They should have scanned him and found that out by now. So I think it's not that. I mean, they do have a scanner. Zan was scanning Dargo with what looked like a fluorescent light bulb. If Scorpius messed with my brain, I would want an MRI. Or an EEG, whatever. Something. Is that going to be the plot of the next episode? No, I bet they'll John... ignore this for a little bit and then go back to it. So usually you point out music stuff, but I noticed that the music is really playful in this one. Yes, it is. There's a reason for that. Was it a different composer? No. All right. I don't think so. Guy Gross. Um, there is... It says in the wiki notes there is a homage to uh, the score from the movie Gremlins. Oh. <laughs> so maybe that's what it is. I did notice that the music was a bit more kind of goofy. It sort of fit the episode. It, but it also kind of stood out because it's not what this show has been doing musically, apart from sort of the first few episodes of season one where it had a bunch of goofy music. It it does stand out, and I know that because I noticed it, and I never noticed the music. Well, not never, because this time I did, but usually this, I don't. Yeah, this is the first time you've brought up music in a long time. <laughs> it kind of took me out of it, because it stood out so much. That's what I don't like about comic music like this, or where they pick overly quirky soundtracks i find it distracting it's a shame because they have shown they already that they handle comedy really well and they don't need to resort to that sort of gimmick there was some stuff that really made me laugh in this episode when aaron is trying to communicate with the vork <laughs> john's being really critical <laughs> I liked the uh, spidery spider stuff with Rigel. His face sort of coming apart as a collection of spiders. That was disgusting and awesome. Also a rare case of good use of CGI in the show. Uh, e well, th there are other good uses of CGI, but... I didn't say only, I said rare. Well, why is CGI and all the space stuff is? And that usually works quite well. But it's because CGI stands out badly when it doesn't blend well with real footage. And the Rigel stuff did blend very well. It's because it had tons of spiders in it. So you're just distracted by the spiders. Because <laughs> no one likes spiders. That's true, I was distracted, and I hate spiders. This all checks out. So if you want to make low-quality CG mix well with real footage, just put tons of spiders in it. That arachnophobia movie must be the best movie of all time. 
I didn't say it was cinematically <laughs> valid. It's just um, spiders are inhuman anyway. It was satisfying to see them all killed. Oh, oh with the uh, freezing thing. And blasts from Aaron's gun. <laughs> that made me laugh. But I understand the impulse. I would do the same. Sure, why not? I get I get wound up though because John froze them all. But what if he missed one? Then this happens again. That's really bad. They, like that's, that's a really serious problem. <laughs> They didn't seem concerned at all that yeah. Yeah, he probably got all of them. They just say, yeah, okay, definite, definite 100% hit rate. Just walk away. It's not as if a couple of us almost died. Once they know how to cure the poison, which, by the way, there was no guarantee they would be able to do that. But once they have the ability to cure the poison, I'm guessing that these spiders were not so threatening. More annoying than anything else. <laughs> yeah. They can't get rid of them, but every couple of days, one of them gets put into a cocoon. <laughs> this just becomes a way of life. They, they, oh, did you get cocooned today? Oh, I got cocooned twice last week. It's a real drag. Aside from the Scorpius stuff, there's not much depth to this episode. Like, it's one of the few episodes where I've got almost nothing in my notes. Well, a thing ends up on board, causes problems, they solve it. Not much character stuff. Um, you see, or we see Gianna being uh, torn up about Dargo, but we already know she cares about Targo. She gets shoved around by the others because they sh treat her as emotionally weak, but she's not, but maybe she kind of is. Kind of standard, fair. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the Vork mystery situation is uh, fleshed out enough. But that that is pretty much the, the whole episode. They're running around constantly trying to solve that and uh in a way there's not much depth and that's fine i'm not saying this is a bad episode uh it might be bad i think it's okay <laughs> like i'm not saying it's good or bad because of that not every episode will have huge revelations because then that would be stupid that wouldn't work I'm not asking for huge revelations it's just that after you discussed the vork stuff then there's the scorpius thing what else is there after that? It, uh, it feels like a lot of this episode was on the surface. Is that uh, an allusion to the body snatching? No. Oh, okay. Because he was only Rigel on the surface. No, he wasn't. This episode is all spiders. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> but he wasn't just surface Rigel. He was... Uh, selfish and had Rigel's memories as well. He was a 100% real Rigel. I like how they figured out Rigel was Rigel. They didn't say, oh, hey, this is Helium, this must be the real Rigel. <laughs> yeah, it was good. They trust us to know. I'm conflicted over whether they uh the the classic approach normally when you have two and then one of them says just shoot both of us kind of thing you know oh they're the good guy yeah uh so the analogy here would have been if rigel had said something deeply selfish or insulting <laughs> or so, you know or something to demonstrate that he, he had a really terrible personality and was an awful person <laughs> but no they just went with the helium Farts, so I guess that's fine. That seems like a thing <laughs> that they do. I liked it because it fit in with 
the episode. We this is an episode where we see urine and poop and humping. Do we see urine? Oh yeah, we's on Dargo. Yeah. That's uh good that they put uh poop and stuff in this episode. <laughs> well, because it's like a little pet thingy. Of course, it's just going to poop on the floor. Yeah, it's not trained. That's something that would literally never happen on Star Trek. If they got a little feral creature in, it would not poop on the floor. But this is what it would do. I mean, probably. That's why I bring it up. I I know it sounds as if I'm just being silly, huh, poo and pee, but as you're saying, th- that's what this, a creature would do, and a lot of sci-fi is sterile and would just avoid that and never mention it and dodge the whole thing. It's a dose of reality, except it's kind of half silly, still. Yeah, it's all played for laughs. It's not just, hey, this thing's being gross, because it's... Gross. Everyone has enough poop in their lives. They don't need to see, like, the TV show characters cleaning up poop. There was a good amount of poop here. Sufficient poop. Sufficient poop. So, quite a good summary for this episode in general. Well, you don't want too much, then you just stink up the place, and then not any, then... If you don't have any poop, then you're compacted, and that's bad. Yeah, um, that went in an odd direction. (laughs) What was Scorpius talking about? Space chess. No, he explicitly says that's not what he's talking about. (laughs) Yes. It's the one thing I know he's not talking about. Yeah, it's not that. It's interesting he picks up the chess piece, though. I don't like that he did that. You don't? I don't want him interacting with the physical space in that mode. Well, I'm assuming he's not actually there. Maybe he is. (laughs) Is That's That's the reveal. That's really Scorpius. (laughs) He's just really good at hiding. Uh, I think... He said John would not see it coming. Yeah, it'll be too late once the trap is something or other. That's a spooky thing to say. Yeah, but that could just be mind games. I could see Scorpius having no real plan. (laughs) He is good at making you believe he does. He definitely wouldn't come out and say, I have no plan. (laughs) Scorpius with a plan is a scary prospect. And he knows that, so he's playing it up. That's why he always is a step ahead, if you ask him. (laughs) Do you have a quote from this episode which you would like to share? Aaron, don't worry. I'm not going to lose my mind. It's all I've got left. That doesn't exactly... Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Confidence. Well, yeah, because it's not up to him. It's not as if you get down to one item of clothing, you can then never lose it. Um, Being the last of something doesn't give you any guarantees. Uh, yeah, in literal terms. I, also, I think what he means is he's he values his mental well-being. And nothing else? That's why he lost everything else? Uh, Okay, yes, you pointed out that it's a bit of a glib statement. (laughs) I'm not convinced he still has his mind. Yeah, it seems like he may already have lost that battle somehow. You can't not lose something that you already lost. Um, yes. And Aaron wants him to let her know when he's losing his mind. How would he even know? This highlights why mental health problems are really serious. 
I mean, I just said that. That's a bit of a downer thing to say, <laughs> but it's kind of true. No, you're right. John just comes off as already crazy when he says that. And I don't mean to use the word crazy in a negative sense. I assumed he lost it a while ago. Th- that this is him coping. This is not John of sound mind. Well, he pulled a gun and shot at near Aaron. <laughs> yeah. It's not exactly what a completely well-adjusted person would do. She brings it up very casually. So, uh, you shot at me earlier. How about that? Well, the fact that she even brought it up is quite, uh, like, Aaron doesn't bring things up generally. She's, she's not one for sweating the details when they have a weird problem and a weird solution. Uh, such as the whole Vork thing, but that obviously stuck out to her as the actions of someone who has issues. She's not wrong. I was surprised that John admitted what was going on, that he said, hey, I'm having these visions. Well, they're close. That makes sense. He wouldn't really hide anything from her. Interesting you say that, because originally that was written between Crichton and Zan. Oh, that wouldn't have worked. And earlier in the episode, I think. And they moved it to the end and moved it from Zan to Aaron. They could have worked with Zan. John's close with Zan. But Zan seems a bit distant to the crew. It always feels like Zan is working in tandem with the crew, not within the crew. She feels separate, detached. In the first season, she she was much more uh, integrated. Yeah. Since her whole weird lawyer problem and uh, her dedication to the priest stuff, I'm sure it has a name. Uh, she, yeah, seems generally to not do what the crew are doing. She often stays on Moya, for example. And it happens over and over. And so it deepens that feeling. I wonder if it's something to do with the makeup or something like that. <laughs> they can't be bothered to do her makeup, so they write her out? No, it's just she has uh, the probably the most extensive makeup of anyone on the cast. Like, uh, full full torso makeup with, like, styling all the way down. Like, she probably had to get up at 2 in the morning. That's frustrating. You get up at 2 and then you're not in the episode much? You just look at some microscopes? I'm not... I don't know if it was. I, it just seems like... Um, that might be the reason often when you have characters who have absurd amounts of makeup, they end up not being that prominent because it's just too physically demanding. Like, because there's less location stuff with Zan this season. That's all I'm suggesting. Yeah, and it's to the point where Zan feels like an extension of Pilot, who is an extension of Moya. So... She feels diminished now. What I mean by an extension of pilot, I mean she's, she's on the ship and yeah, t- helping the crew. If she never gets off the ship, then she's kind of sort of like pilot too. She was off the ship uh, a few episodes back. Uh, she was with John in a transport pod in Dream a Little Dream. So it's not like she's rooted to the ship. I just... But it feels that way. It feels that way, yeah. It's noticeable. I haven't really brought it up, but um, my theory is it's to do with characters, makeup. That makes sense to me. I don't have a a confirmation of that. That's just my personal uh, feeling. Then again, Dargo has full everything. Although maybe... Is that... That's probably going to take as long as Zan. 
But maybe not, because he doesn't have like the body painting stuff. Shall we move on to the next episode? Yep. Okay, let's do it. Let's see if Scorpius ensnares John in some superb trap that he won't see coming, which is, by the way, how traps work, generally. Yeah, I don't see how that's unique. Well, <laughs> if you, if you unique see a trap is always coming, valuable. and then you, you think, oh, if I step right here, I'll be trapped, and then you still do it, that's a bad trap. Well, they do that's, it in this episode. That's on you. They say it's an ambush, but then they're like, well, as long as we know it's okay. So as long as John knows, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Cool. Let's see if that is the case. Okay.